We have more visibility, and mm -hmm. second, uh, we are confident about Q4, and so therefore we have raised the bottom end to 8.4, and uh, um, in Q3, we had some seasonal impact because of furloughs. Mm. We also had this RBS impact where we took the brunt of it in, mm. in Q3. Uh, it impacted more than 1% of our revenue mm. globally. So those uh, will be now, will be behind us and uh, to, to, to a large degree. And so we are confident about uh, about Q4, and right. that's the reason for the guidance. Right. A lot of concern ar uh, around the U.S. market, particularly after President Trump's election. On the one hand, people expect clients to, you know, be a lot more generous with purse strings now that the overhang is out of the way. But on the other hand, there's also concern on protectionism, on H-1B visas. What is your reading of the situation? My own sense is that uh, if you look at President-elect Trump's uh, journey, his his life, he's all about innovation being a businessman and entrepreneur. And so we expect that the government is going to be a business friendly and innovation friendly, entrepreneurship friendly administration. Um, and so in that sense, the business atmosphere will be much more open and uh, um, you know, open to innovation, uh, open to breakthrough new ideas and, and so forth. So as long as we are focused on that, hmm. um, it's going to be fine. There will be some changes we expect to the H1 policy, depending on what the changes are, We'll see what the impact of that is going to be. But anyway, we have to focus more on local hiring. This is something that I have been working on for the last two and a half years since I started. And, you know, I am myself a local hire. And mm -hmm. uh, um, it, is a, it is something that is uh, healthy for a uh, delivering innovation anyway, that you need a combination of uh, strong local talent uh, together with, with the world-class talent from around the, around the globe, uh, where we can bring the best of what is possible to our clients. So whether it is Australia or Europe or in Singapore, for example, recently they went to this 50-50 policy and mm. so we have, mm. we have been complying, complying with that. So, mm. so I think it is overall, a, in the long run, it's a good thing. Right. Um, also want to understand, Vishal, uh, there's been an announcement on, you know, a deputy COO this uh, uh, quarter. Ravi Kumar has been elevated to that post. What broader implication does this have? Uh, does it mean eventual transition to Praveen's role? And you hinted at more management uh, changes uh, <laughs> in the joint address. So just wondering, uh, you know, what other changes should we brace for in the coming months? I, I heard that. I heard mm -hmm. that. The, uh, uh, no, 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 no changes. We have a very mm. stable, very high-performing management team. Mm. Uh, um, so there's that, no worry of more top level. No, no, absolutely not. Uh, mm. This is a uh, our four presidents and myself, Praveen Ranga and Krish, and you know our team, mm. Sanjay Navin, Ritika in Palo Alto. This is a very we have a very strong team. Deepak is here, so mm. um, we are. Uh, Sangeeta just joined us from Wipro. Sudhir just joined us from Google. Mm. Uh, so it's a it's a very strong uh, management team, a very cohesive management team, and knock on wood, you know. Uh, we work together very well, and so you always want to look for new talent. Uh, mm. There are always changes that are possible. This is what I was I was saying, mm. uh, but uh, there are no changes that are planned. We are very very proud of our team, and we work together. We are going through a very difficult transformation as a company. Mm. It is not easy uh, mm. for a ten billion dollar company now, two hundred thousand people right. going through such a fundamental change in this this kind of a climate. So you need a very tight, trusted. Uh, team and I am very proud of, of the team that right. we have. Praveen and I, you know, run this together for the last two and a half years. We have run this together. Uh, it is um, difficult for um, uh, people outside to understand the kind of trust and the deeply held relationship that, that you know, Praveen and I have in jointly running this company. He is my partner and uh, um, so, you know, um, when Ranga took over as CFO, he appointed Jayesh as his deputy. And that model worked very well. Uh, and uh, so as we saw our increasing scale and this dramatic transformation mm -hmm. that is happening, you know, um, we felt that it would be good for Ravi to come back here. And earlier we used to have a lot of management in, in India. Right. Um, and so we felt that uh, it would be great for Ravi to be here as Praveen's deputy and helping out operation. And then Praveen told me today that don't call me after <laughs> 10 p.m. anymore, Vishal. <laughs> Okay. And uh, finally, Vishal, you know, it took Infosys about 36 years to become a $10 billion company. How are you going to achieve another $10 billion in three years? I think another 36 years to $100 billion, <laughs> is that what you were thinking? Or <laughs> the, uh, 30, that's right, 36 years to $10 billion. That's, that's not bad. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, not, that's a testimony to the founders and the employees who have brought the company to this point. And, uh, I remember when I started, it was just over eight billion. So we have added close to two billion in the last two and a half years. Um, the journey ahead is all about innovation, all about automation, and mastering automation. 
see, we are living in a time where AI is becoming extremely prevalent. Mm. And um, although we are still in very early stages of AI, there is a lot more work that needs to happen. It is going to have a significant impact on our industry. Mm. Mm. And if we are early on enough able to embrace that and embrace ourselves into a culture of automation, where we embrace automation to free ourselves up to do more, to be more, mm. uh, and then use that to, to be innovative and deliver innovation, uh, be creative. I think that that is what is necessary in the times ahead. Yeah. So we want to renew the services that we presently have, mm. uh, all the way from, from our digital, BI, product engineering, and especially application development mm. and maintenance and mm. infrastructure, um, on the basis of this automation and innovation, and augment that with new software-led services, uh, with MANA platform, with Kava, Edge, Panaya, Noah, and some of the new services that we have launched, like the small and medium-sized business services and so forth. Uh, I think a combination of that renew and new strategy is going to get us there. Sure, sure. Finally, Vashal, any impact of demonetization that you've seen so far as far as India business is concerned? I think that it's a huge opportunity for digital. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in Mumbai day before yesterday, mm -hmm. and there is a lot of excitement around uh, around digital money, mm -hmm. digital payments. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that, that is, I think that this disruptive event, which has been, uh, I think in the long run, this is a, a hugely positive event. Um, it is a very bold move that the Prime Minister made. Sure. And yes, it was disruptive, uh, but it has, uh, it is going to be something that is going to lead to a much faster, much more accelerated embrace of digital. Sure. And I think that is a very good thing. And of course, for us, uh, that is a good thing because, you know, Finical is a huge part of the back financial backbone in India. Um, and we have been working on GSTN. We have been working on the Department of Post becoming hmm. also banking hmm. service hmm. providers and, hmm. and so forth. So I think that as India becomes more digital and the financial infrastructure hmm. becomes more digital, this is a very good thing.